Hi there, I'm Robert Reed. Today we're going to talk about using Capture One to update the background of a white image to pure white. Now I'm using Capture 120 for this demonstration, but it will work with Capture 112 with a couple of uh, slight differences. But everything with, that's important about the workflow will work just the same. So first of all, why do we need to update a white background? Well, let me show you. This background, although it looks white, it's not actually pure white. Let me change the background of the viewer to white and we'll see that we can see the background of the image is actually uh, a light gray. And you can see the value of up here, the, uh, the color and, and white values are of the image as I move the cursor around the subject. And we see that uh, this is actually around 250, 240 to 235 or so around the subject. Now pure white is 255, so we're definitely below the pure white level. And the reason why I don't shoot at 255 is because that really means you're overexposing the background and you risk putting too much light into the camera, which could cause lens flare, cause loss of contrast in the image, um, loss of details around the edges of the subject, and other problems. And I don't want to deal with any of that. So I make sure the background is exposed lower than pure white. Typically, in a studio, I try to get around 250 to 253. These photos are all shot in an on-location session, and I was perhaps a bit rushed and didn't get the ideal values, but 240 to 230 is, is just fine and it will work with a little extra cleanup towards at the end. So the first step in the process is to create a new filled layer by clicking on the plus sign, holding it down, and then choose new filled layer. I'm going to change the name of this layer to BG. And uh, I'm going to turn on Always Display Mask, and we see that there is a mask here. And then click Luma Range. So this is where we uh, modify the mask so that it, it's only selecting the brighter images in the, in the photo, which ideally are just the background. Because my background is a little bit dimmer than normal, it's, it is going to select parts of the subject, but we can easily clean that up later. So first we change the high end of the range to be the max value and then bring up the low side all the way up to about where we set the range um, about, or about where we saw the lower dimmer pixels in the background. But I'm going to give myself a little bit of headroom because I'm going to use this mask on all these photos. So I'm going to stop it at about 215 or so, 217 is fine. So let's apply that and let's look at the top of the head. Yeah, so we're we're not uh, masking the hair correctly. So let's go back into the Luma range and update the radius. So radius is really just increasing the soft edge of the mask. And it goes up to about 300, which is more than enough to, to cover this edge here. And the sensitivity is controlling um, the sens how sensitive Capture One is going to be in selecting the background, that is the light areas versus the dark areas. I'm going to make this a little bit more sensitive just to make sure we don't blow away some of the finer details in the hair. 60 should do. And apply that. And now we've got a nice mask through the hair and we can see that it's going to be selecting um, these gaps and not leave any gray areas. So let's turn the mask off. I'm just going to use M to turn that off. And now uh, use the curve tool and select the top right hand selection point and just slide that over until the input value, which is down at the bottom left, matches the bottom end of the range. I'm just going to go to about 215 or so. And now we see that all the, the background is, is white. The, some selection on the subject is, is bright, but we'll take care of that at the end. The next step I want to do is select all of the other session, all the other photos in this session with Command A. And I'm going to turn off the proofing margin so we can see all the images and we see that all of these have a background which is light gray about the same as the original image so all we need to do is copy this layer to the rest of the images now this is one difference in capture 120 that I want to point out which is in previous versions of capture one whenever you copied the layers it would copy all the layers um, without being able to choose a specific layer so that means if you're going to do this in capture 112 you probably want to do this early in your process so that there's no other layers created on the other images or this image and you're only copying the background layer. In Capture 120, you can do this uh, later in your process so that, and you can just choose this one layer 
to copy to the other images. So let's apply that. And now all the images have white backgrounds and we can see that right away. So now the last thing to do is to update the mask so we're not selecting extra pixels inside the subject. So I'm gonna choose the eraser tool and do option M to display the grayscale mask and, and then choose turn off auto mask and maybe make this a little bit smaller and erase all of the inside of this mask and get into the ears a bit and there, so get the shirt. So I'm just gonna do a rough, a rough first pass just so we can see that. So I'll turn off the mask and over here, turn off the background layer and see that there's a gray background and we have white background and the subject is unchanged and we can see the hair. So that's it for updating the backgrounds. Um, I uh, hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching it all the way through and I'll see you next time.